How many of you remember your dad or your mom saying, Are you listening to me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? When they ask those questions, what they really meant is, Have you done what I asked? Have you done what I told you to do? You see, really listening, really hearing is always connected to responding, acting upon what is being said. The same is true with the Word of God. It's one thing for the Scriptures, the Word of God, to go through our physical ears, and it is a whole other thing for us to receive it into our hearts and then live it out in our day-to-day lives. So are you listening to God's Word? Are you really hearing what God is saying to you from His Word? Are you responding to it, acting upon it, submitting to it, obeying it, and living it out? This morning, I want us to look together at a parable that Jesus told about four types of soul, revealing how people listen and respond to the Word of God. I invite you this morning to turn with me to Mark's Gospel, chapter number 4. Mark, chapter number 4. And I want to bring you a message titled this morning, Listening and responding to the Word of God. Listening and responding to the Word of God. Mark chapter 4, verse number 1. The Bible says, And again he began to teach by the sea. And a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat, and he sat in it on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it scorched it, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, And hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. 
These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of the world and the desires of rich, deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some one hundred. Now, one of Jesus' methods for teaching was telling a parable. Some have defined a parable simply as an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. The word parable that is used in verse number 2 has the idea and literally means to throw alongside. In other words, Jesus would take a concept that people of his day were familiar with and such as sowing seeds in different types of soil and throw that common idea alongside to teach a spiritual divine truth. In this parable, the seed, as verse 14 says, refers to the Word of God. In other words, the seed of God's Word, when it is shared, when it is received, it has the potential to bring forth fruit in a person's heart and life. Now, the sower in this parable would be anyone who sows and shares the Word of God. Jesus was the sower in this parable. All preachers and teachers of the Word, they're sowers. And all Christians who share the Word and the gospel message, they are sowers of the seed of the Word as well. The soil in this parable represents the different types of a human heart and their responses to the Word of God. Now let's consider these four comparisons of the heart's response to the Word of Almighty God. In the first comparison, Jesus reveals to us that some have a heart like the wayside soul. Notice there in verse number 4. Over in the land of Israel, where Jesus lived and where Jesus ministered, the ground for growing crops would be in strips, and the strips would be separated by a footpath. The footpath would be hard. It would be compacted dirt where people and animals would walk across it, would pass by it so that they wouldn't step on the crops. Now in this day and time, the way seed was sown was one of two ways. Sometimes a sower, a farmer, would take a leather bag, a leather satchel, and he would put it around his neck or his arm. It would be on his side, and he would go across a piece of ground, gathering a handful of seed out of that sack and just scattering it, sowing it out, on the ground. Uh, we don't plant corn and beans like that today, but we do plant lettuce and turnip greens and things like that by sowing it, scattering it out evenly on the ground. Also during that time, sometimes a, fa a farmer would plant an area of ground by taking an animal such as a donkey or a horse or a mule and he would tie a sack of seed on the back of that animal. And as the animal walked, there would be a small hole in that bag of seed. And as the animal walked along, the seed would be scattered out on the ground. Now when the sower 
whether it be a person or an animal scattering this seed, sometimes naturally when they'd be throwing the seed out, most of it would go on the good ground, but some of it would go on that wayside soil, the footpath, that hard, compacted ground that was on the sides of where the people walked. Jesus here is saying that this ground is hard, this ground is unprepared, and as such the seed was not received and it lay on the ground and when a flock of birds came by they would see that seed and think, well there is a good treat. And they would fly down, snatch, and eat that seed away. Now look over in verse number 15. Jesus explains what he's talking about. The sower scatters the seed, shares the word with the person. This person has a hard heart like the wayside soil. And then the birds of Satan, they come and steal the seed of the word away from their mind and they never think about it again. It's not been received, it's not been taken in, and the birds steal it, snatch it, and it is removed. You know, when we lived in Maiden, North Carolina, we raised a big flock of chickens. We had all kinds of chickens. We had standard-sized chickens, and we had bannies. We had all kinds. And I remember we would plant a big garden. Well, one morning I was out in the garden. I'd laid off my row, and I was planting some green beans. And I was carrying that uh, little pack of bean seed in my hand, and I was dropping that seed in the ground. Every couple of inches I'd put one or two bean seeds in the ground, and I just kept walking slowly and steadily over that row. And as I was walking planting those beans, I heard someone walking behind me. And when I turned around, one of those big plump hens was walking right behind me. And every time I'd drop a bean seed in the ground, that hen would snatch it up, gobble it up, and eat it. And so, in order to have a crop of green beans, I had to first put the chickens up. And then I had to replant the beans and then cover the beans in order to have a crop. You know, in the same way, when the soil of the human heart is hard, maybe it's hard because of unbelief, maybe it's hard because of indifference, maybe it's hard because of being uninterested in the Word. When the human heart is hard and the word is sown on that heart, when it is shared with that person, it's not received into the heart, it's not taken into that person's heart, and so very quickly Satan comes by and he snatches away the word where that person will never think about or consider it again. You know, as I thought about that, when you hear the word, when I hear the word, do we receive it or do we resist it? Do we take it in or do we shun it? Do we open our hearts to it or are we opposed to it? Do we believe it or are we skeptical towards it? Do we hunger for the Word or are we uninterested in the Word? This morning, if you believe that you have a hard heart towards the Word, whether it be hard from sin or indifference or being uninterested or unbelief, confess that to God. Share that with the Lord. Pour that over on Him and ask Him to remove that and soften your heart that your heart may be receptive and open to His holy word. Well, there's a second comparison. And in it, Jesus reveals to us that some have a heart like the stony soil. Now look at verses 5 and 6 of our text. 
the stony ground that Jesus is referring to. Now, it's not referring to a field that's been plowed, that's full of rocks. Uh, I've planted some gardens in some gardens that was full of rocks. And I found you can grow some green beans and potatoes and ground like that. But that's not the ground that Jesus is talking about here. The stony ground would be an area of land with a thin layer of topsoil. And just a few inches below the topsoil would be a large limestone. Now on that thin layer of topsoil, you can scratch it up, you can clean it up, you can even plant some seed, and that seed, Jesus said, would sprout. But after it sprouted, it wouldn't be able to grow. It wouldn't take root. It couldn't find enough moisture. So the hot sun, when it comes out, it would shine down on that fresh sprout, and then it would wither away before maturing enough to bear fruit. Now look at how he interprets this in verses 16 and 17. Jesus here describes the one who has a heart like the stony ground as one who has a shallow heart. A shallow heart. This person immediately receives the word. They receive the word enthusiastically. They receive the word merely on the surface of their emotions in the moment. But they receive the word without counting the cost, without repenting of sin, without submitting to Jesus as Lord, without committing their life to Christ. It's merely an emotional, enthusiastic response without fully being committed to the Lord and His Word. Jesus says that this person, they endure for only a short time, but when the sun of trouble, the sunshine of persecution, the sunshine of daylight pressure, the sunlight of difficulties, when they begin to beat down upon this person, this person stumbles, falls away, and deserts, the faith and the Word of God all together. You know, Jesus said in John 8 and 31, You are my disciples if you continue in my Word. In other words, those who are really followers of Christ, those who have really committed themselves to the Word and the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll continue, they'll remain, they'll abide, they'll Keep on going on, obeying the Word, living in the Word, taking in the Word, and allowing it to have an effect in their lives. When we think about this person that takes the Word in only superficially, there's not a real commitment there. This person doesn't stand strong during the trials of life. Uh, each spring, you know, you see those bonnie vegetable plants at the stores. You know what I'm talking about, bonnie vegetable plants. And on Bonnie's plant website, they state this about the roots of a plant. Roots provide the anchor needed to keep a plant in place. But more importantly, roots are the lifeline of a plant taking up air, water, and nutrients from the soil and moving them into the leaves where they can interact with sunlight to produce sugars, flavors, and energy for the plant. In other words, folks, if a plant is not rooted, that plant is not connected to the ground. It's not related to the ground as it should be. And as such, if a plant is not rooted in the ground properly, it will not survive, it will not grow, and it will not bear fruit. Colossians 2, 6 through 7, Paul says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, 
rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Do you see the idea there? We need to be really committed to Christ at the beginning, make a true commitment, a full commitment, a complete yield of, yieldedness of yourself, a full surrender of yourself to the Lord. And as such, when one does, it causes them to be rooted in Christ in such a way that they'll be able to stand through the persecution and troubles and trials of life. I remember at Fruitland, I had a teacher there by the name of Dr. Thad Daddle. Dr. Daddle was born and raised over in Franklin, North Carolina. And he had a lot of witty, pithy statements. And one statement he made, you might want to jot this down in your Bible. He said, a faith that fizzles before the finish had a fatal flaw from the first. Now, did you catch that? A faith that fizzles, that goes away, in other words, before the finish, had a fatal flaw from the first. To keep from fizzling before the finish, to keep from departing from the truth, one must ensure that they have received Christ as Lord and Savior. One must be willing to obey the Word of God, truly committed to it, willing to pay the price no matter what. Well, there's the stony ground. And then there's a third comparison in our text. Jesus reveals to us that some have a heart like the thorny soul. Notice in verse number 7 of our text. Jesus here tells us that some of the seed fell among thorns. Now, in the day of Jesus, sometimes farmers would be lazy when they were preparing soil, and they would simply go across a piece of ground, cutting away the growth there, cutting away the weeds, cutting away the thorns, maybe raking that growth away. Other farmers would set a fire and would burn the tops off of the weeds and the tops off of the thorns there and then rake away what was left. Now, even though the ground appeared to be cleared, appeared to be prepared for sowing, underneath the surface there were roots and seeds of thorns and weeds that were left untouched. They were present. And so when that farmer sows that seed into that soil, the seed springs up, but at the same time, the thorns spring up, the weeds spring up, and they both are growing together. And Jesus says, as the good seed, it sprouts and grows simultaneously, the thorns sprout, the weeds sprout and they choke out the good seed causing it to be unfruitful. Notice the interpretation by Jesus in verses 18 and 19. He tells us that these thorns choke the word causing the word to become unfruitful. Notice that word choke in our text. The word choke there literally means to press out to crowd out, to cut off, to suffocate, inhibit growth, to deprive life. In other words, Jesus describes a scenario where the thorns and the weeds would grow faster than the good seed, and the thorns and the weeds, they would grow fast, they would take up space, they would take nutrients away from the soil, they would take moisture out of the ground, they would take sunlight and shade the good seed, causing the good seed to become weak, deprived, and unable to bear a fruit. What thorns choke out the word? What thorns choke out the word in our life? What thorns can choke 
the Word of God out from it being fruitful and having an effect in my life and your life. Well, Jesus mentions three different thorns here. He describes in verse 19 the cares of the world. Now, the word cares there in its primary sense means to be distracted, to drawn, be drawn in different directions. The cares of this world would speak of all the things of life that distract us, that worry us, that draw us in directions away from doing the will of God. You know, we're all prone to distractions. Wouldn't you agree with that? We know what God wants us to do. We know what God's Word says, but I've got this I've got that, and we're pulled in various directions. That's the cares of the world that Jesus says. And if we're not careful, these things that draw us away, these distractions, whether good or bad, they can so divide our heart and inhibit the Word of God from having a full and fruitful effect in our lives. Then Jesus says another thorn is the deceitfulness of riches. Do you see that? In verse 19, the word riches there literally speaks of material possessions. Aren't we living in a materialistic age? You've got to have this, the best of that, the, the biggest of that, the newest, the latest. Always trying to keep up with those around us. In other words, Jesus said the Word can be choked out, crowded out of our heart when we're constantly pursuing material possessions over the kingdom of God. Friend, Jesus says that to pursue material possessions over the living Word of God is deceitful, it's misleading. Now, I realize some may say, well, I want to have both. And naturally speaking, we all feel that way at times. But we must be careful about basing our life on pursuing material possessions to the point that we crowd out the Word of God and what He would have us to do each and every day of our lives. Not only the deceitfulness of riches, the cares of the world, but he mentions a third thorn. Look at verse 19. The desires for other things. Now the word desires there means a craving, a longing to have, a passionate desire, a passion for something other than the things of God. You know, we can make an idol out of anything if we're not careful. And an idol simply is anything that we put before the Lord. Anything we put before the Lord. The thorny ground is a heart that's crowded, a heart that's busy, a heart that's divided, a heart that is full, a heart that has a lot planted in it, a heart that has a lot taken into it. I read a story about a young man who once proposed to a young lady and he said, Darling, I want you to know that I love you more than everything else. Please marry me. Honey, I'm not rich. I don't have a yacht or a Rolls Royce like Johnny Brown, but I love you with all my heart. The young lady stood there for a few moments in thought and then replied, I love you with all my heart too. But tell me more about this Johnny Brown. See, she had a love for this young man. She had an interest in this young man. But she also had an interest and a love and a desire to know about Johnny Brown as well. And so like this young woman, the stony heart is crowded with more than one love, more than one pursuit, more than one desire, more than one drive in life. This thorny ground wants to travel both the broad path and the narrow path at the same time. There's a tension there. There is a division there. But you know, folks, listen, Jesus 
doesn't come next after anything. Jesus must have first place. Receiving His Word, living out His Word as His disciples must be first. It must be foremost. It must take precedence on everything else in our lives. The thorny ground, this person with a thorny heart may seem to begin well, but the world's love, the desire for other things, the cares, the distractions of life, strangle and choke out the Word from having a full and fruitful effect in this person's life. You know what, when I read that, I said, God, may you help me so prioritize my heart and life so that listening and living out your Word is my central focus. That's what we need. And then there's a fourth comparison Jesus makes in our text. He tells us that some have a heart like the good soul. Look at verse number 8. Jesus here describes seed being scattered. The same sower, the same seed, it's sown, it's falling upon the ground. Now what's different about this ground? It's good ground, it's soft ground, it's ground that was prepared, ground that was ready, ground that was open to the seed. After the ground received the seed, the seed then is springing up. It's yielding a crop. Some places the crop is 30-fold, in other places the crop is 60, and in some places the crop is 100-fold. Now in verse number 20, Jesus tells us that this good soil represents a man or a woman or a boy or a girl that hears the Word. They're really hearing it. They're taking it in. They're accepting the Word. And then the Word is having an effect in their life. They're responding to that Word. They're living out the Word. Thus, there is the fruit of God's Word coming out and through their lives. Now, what does it mean there in verse 20 to hear the word? Do you see that? Jesus says this good soul, this heart that is open to the word, it hears the word. To hear here means to listen to it with intentions. To listen to it as God speaks to them. To listen to it as it instructs them. To listen to it as it teaches them. To listen to it as it reveals right from wrong to them. To listen to it to know what to trust in. To know what to turn from. To know what to do. That's what it means to hear the Word. Are you hearing? Are you open? When the Word of God is taught, when the Word of God is preached from, do you realize that the Bible is literally God speaking to you and me? It's not the preacher. It's not the teacher. But when we share the Word of God, and that's why I believe in expounding the Word, because I don't have anything within myself to say. Simply, I believe preaching is giving the Bible a voice. And so this is God's Word. Hear the Word. Then Jesus says that this one who has a heart like the good ground, they accept the Word. What does it mean then to accept it? To hear it, listen with intentions, but then accept it, receive it, take it in. Have you ever noticed when you get a foreign object in your eye, maybe a grain of sand, a speck of dirt, a part of a bug... What do you do? Well, immediately the eye closes itself and then the eye begins to water and that eye begins to try to push out that foreign object. You know, if we're not careful, the same is true with the human heart and mind. When we hear the truth of God's Word... Sometimes it may irritate us. Sometimes it may challenge us. Sometimes it may convict us. Sometimes it may shed light upon some area of our lives. And may we not close down our minds, shut up our hearts 
to reject and resist the Word of God as God is allowing it to be sown in our hearts. Spiritual health and life depends upon us accepting, receiving, and taking in, not pushing out the Word of God. And then Jesus here says that this good soil bears fruit. Do you see that in our text? Bears fruit. The word, the idea of bearing fruit means putting the Word of God into action. Doing what it says when heard and accepted, the Word results in fruit being produced in the believer's life. There's the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and fruitfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The fruit of good works, the fruit of holiness, the fruit of praise to God, the fruit of leading another person to Christ. What do you do when you plant a garden and you want to have a big harvest, when you want to fill up your cabinets, when you want to fill up your freezers, when you want to fill up all your jars? You prepare that ground. You remove the weeds, remove the rocks, remove the sticks, remove the roots and the thorns and the trees and the crabgrass. And then you plow that ground. You apply fertilizer. You get the soil ready. You have to ready it. You have to prepare it. Why? So that it will take the seed in, germinate, grow, and bear forth fruit. James 1.21 says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the engrafted, implanted Word of God which is able to save your souls. A heart that represents good soul, folks, is ready for the Word, welcomes the Word, accepts the Word, applies the Word, responds to the Word, and then lives the Word out in every area of their lives. Well, Jesus here is saying the condition of the human heart determines how receptive and fruitful it will be. What is your heart most like? Is your heart like the hard wayside soil? Is your heart like the stony ground you hear? Maybe you agree, but no real commitment. Is your heart like the thorny soil that is divided, that is busy, that is crowded? Or is your heart like the good soil, receptive and responsive to His holy word? My prayer this morning is that God would work in my heart and God would work in your heart that our hearts would be made good soil. Soil that's not a thin layer and then a bedrock underneath. Soil that's not hard. Soil that's not full of weeds and thorns. But soil that's prepared and open and soft and ready to welcome the Word of God in. Let's stand to our feet. If you've got a need in your life, I invite you to come this morning. If you need to be saved, I invite you to come. If you have a burden you'd like for me to pray with you about, I invite you to come. What's on your heart? What's on your mind? During this invitation, may each of us look within and ask God, what is the condition of my heart? Is my heart in a condition that it's ready to receive and respond to God's Word. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day and all your many blessings. Be with your people. God, I pray that you'd speak to our, all of our hearts. Help us to take this truth seriously and to have ears to hear, hearts to receive, your word so that it'll have a full and fruitful effect in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Let's sing one verse, brother Shannon. Page 